Welcome um, to a new series, which is going to be about using the transistor curve tracer. This is a Type 575 from Tektronix. Came out in about 1957, 58 around there, if I'm not mistaken. And it's used for tracing semiconductors. Uh, semi semiconductors have characteristic curves that you can use to identify operating points um, and uh, things like breakdown voltages and gain all kinds of parameters around diodes, transistors uh, both BJTs, FETs, MOSFETs, Zener diodes, tunnel diodes and this device lets you see these curves now what I have displayed here you are probably familiar with this is the collector current versus uh, collector voltage and each step is a base current step and this is the classic HFE curves that you use to find the gain of a transistor and this in the day it was made was pretty much the standard for looking at uh, characteristic curves of transistor and this was used well into the 60s and was produced till almost 1972 um, there's a very cool Wikipedia, well, not a Wikipedia, a tech, a tech wiki article about it um, that you can go and check out on the tech wiki website. They have all the information for all kinds of Tektronics gear. This video is going to be a primer for using uh, this piece of equipment. Now, not all curve tracers are the same, uh, but they're very similar in how they work and the kind of building blocks. So. I'm going to show the various blocks of the curve tracer and how they interact with each other and how it all works. And then the next videos will be about measuring specific things. So there will be a video about uh, AC and DC current gain of uh, bipolar transistors. There's going to be uh, transconductance of FETs. And uh, then there will be one on uh, diodes, of various kinds of diodes. So the first sections we're going to visit on the curve tracer are the vertical and horizontal amplifiers. Now it's basically an XY display and you're just choosing with these controls here what you want displayed. So Tektronix made this very versatile and allows you to either show in the vertical uh, collector current or base volts. There's this extra setting here for base current or base volts which is based on the switch which is below which we'll take a look at um, and the horizontal also has that now the horizontal you can either view collector volts or base volts so base volts can be viewed on either axis either the vertical or the horizontal but only collector current can be uh, viewed on this one and only collector volts can be viewed on that one external there's a jack on the back that you can actually feed in uh, signals to the vertical and horizontal amplifier if you want to use this as an XY display. There's also an attachment which I believe is a 175 is a, um, a, a high current adapter for testing really high current and high voltage semiconductors. This is the base step generator. This is the heart of this instrument and it's what sets it apart from the more DIY circuits like the octopus curve tracer circuit where you can just test a couple diodes and transistor junctions. This creates a stair step waveform that can either be negative or positive going and applies it to the base of the transistor under test. You can view multiple base steps and that's adjustable by this. The lowest fully anti-clockwise is four steps of base current and the full clockwise is 12 base steps of current. The base steps is set with this knob here. This is the step selector switch. This side of the switch is milliamps per step. This portion of the switch here is volts per step. You are basically just setting the distance how many milliamps per step is being applied at each stair step. So you're kind of adjusting the height of the stairs. And that's really useful for checking how transistors will function at different uh, base currents. 
base voltages, it's the same thing except you're applying a fixed voltage to it. And then you can insert a series resistor from 22k ohms to 1 ohm. And that's adjustable with the switch here. This switch is only active when you're in the volts per step. And you can see that they've denoted that with this little arrow line here. The step zero is for setting the zeroth step. This is to ensure that reading from the zero line at the very bottom of the graticule, and as you count up, the steps are, act are accurate and they are actually reading from zero to the first step properly. And I'll show how to set that when we go into how to set up the uh, how to set this up to look at the transistor curves. This is the zero volt and zero current switch. It's for when you're setting up the transistor and you're setting the step zero. Zero volts grounds the base of the transistor. Zero current opens the connection between the step generator and the transistor's base, or the transistor's gate, depending on what kind of transistor you're testing. You use that to see your reference point, to see where zero is. Then you come out of it, you set your zero so that it's the same, and you toggle back and forth until you have your zero is set with your grounded base, or open current, or zero current, um, whatever you're using to set it up. This switch here is the steps per second switch. This is just kind of the refresh rate of the screen and there's two different ways that it can draw the curves. And I'll get into that when we actually look at the display. It's hard to explain what the switch does uh, just by looking at it. This is the repetitive or single family switch. In the center position, it turns the base step generator off. It's not applying a staircase waveform. In the momentary down position, it applies one set of steps and it's just like a pulse you can see it just like a wave across the screen and I'll show that when you put it up into repetitive it constantly applies that and keeps refreshing it and you keep seeing it drawing the steps over and over again this is the collector sweep the collector sweep is, is, is special the curve tracer doesn't just apply a steady DC voltage to the collector. What it does is in order to minimize the amount of power being dissipated in the transistor while you're testing it, uh, it actually sends pulsed DC to the transistor's collector. The way it does that is very simple. You take a, an AC input and you rectify it and you don't filter it. So it's just at the line frequency of 120 Hz, it's a full wave rectified AC uh, signal. You have the peak volts knob here. This sets the voltage being applied to the collector. It's got two positions on this switch as well to set the range. This is 0 to 20 volts, 10 amps average. This is a con continuous current rating. And the 0 to 200 volt range, which is 1 amp continuous. That's quite a, quite a bit of, of power able to source from this so you don't want to have your fingers on the terminals when this is turned up to 200 volts. There's a circuit breaker in case you fry yourself or the transistor and there's a polarity switch to change the polarity of the pulses either they're negative or positive depending on what kind of transistor you're uh, testing. This is the dissipation limiting resistor and that's a fancy word for collector load resistor. And all this is, is a resistor in series with the supply, the collector sweep supply, to the collector of the transistor. And this is completely adjustable. Um, there are a number of positions going from 100k to a complete short. And this is very helpful for when you're looking at breakdown voltages because you can limit the maximum current but still crank up the voltage past the uh, breakdown voltage of the collector and you can actually see the breakdown curves without frying the transistor and that's how they get those breakdown curves on the data sheets they look all fancy. The reason they, they do the pulse DC and not a steady DC is because you don't want your transistor to heat up while you're testing it because uh, semiconductors when they get warm conduct better. It's great. Transistor conducting better, who wouldn't want that? Until you realize that it will skew your results of how much gain the transistor has because it'll be a better conductor. 
Not only that, but it could enter thermal runaway if you're, if you're really running the transistor hard. You could have a, a domino effect of thermal runaway where it gets hotter and conducts better because it gets hotter, which makes it get even hotter, and then it conducts even better. Uh, and this is a process that keeps going until the transistor self-destructs and uh, you have a junction that goes open or it shorts and pops a fuse somewhere. So, um, very important to understand these controls because this is the dangerous part of this uh, piece of equipment. Not the base step and not the vertical horizontal amplifier. They're pretty straightforward and you probably can't kill yourself with those, but with 200 volts with about an amp that you can source from it, it's very dangerous and obviously you want to be careful. There are open terminals. This is what I've heard some people refer to as the front porch. This is where your transistor under test will be. There are two sockets here. You can see I have a transistor populated in that one. There's a big switch in the middle, and there's two sets of binding posts. This socket and this binding post are the, tr are the transistor A test section. This set, set of binding posts and this socket here are the transistor B test section. The sockets have a switchable emitter or base ground position. So you can either ground the emitter or ground the base. And why would you want to do that? If you want to test the gain as a grounded base amplifier, you have to switch this to base grounded. The uh, banana plugs here, um, the emitter is always grounded. So if you wanted to do a base grounded amplifier, you would just have to connect the base to this emitter terminal here. This switch selects which one you're testing. In the middle position, they're both disconnected. In this position, you're testing transistor B, and in this position, tran uh, testing transistor A. That's really helpful because you can take two of the same kind of transistor, and you can toggle between them, um, and you can use that to match transistors. If you don't want to do the math every time, you can just toggle between them. The final section of the curve tracer is, of course, the display. And we need the display in order to see the curves of the transistor. So right now I'm adjusting the peak volts and you can see because I have the horizontal here selected collector volts, as I increase the collector volts of the collector sweep, the trace extends that way and I have it set to one volt per division. So that's 10 volts of collector voltage. So now if I go ahead and select the transistor with that big toggle switch on the front porch, you can see our transistor curves. So if I increase some settings here to get some just a better uh, display, you can see right now it's drawing a line here. Now that's because this doesn't have blanking. And that's actually kind of helpful in this case. You can use this line as your load line. Now the other setting, which is the center setting of that switch, is the 240 hertz. You can see it draws a kind of a combination of both. You can see there's a little bit of a line down there and there's some lines over here. And if I change this base steps, the family of steps, you can see some, it like, kind of alternates. So what this is, it's a combination of the upper 120 hertz position and the lower 120 hertz position. If I stick it into the upper, you will see there's no lines here anymore. So it's drawing it all from here. So it's actually retracing from the saturation region uh, as opposed to the ends of the curve there. That's very handy to know that you can set it however you want for the best viewing. Um, but I do find it handy to have that lower position to actually draw my load line when I'm analyzing the transistor in my circuit. I hope you enjoyed the video showing the Type 575 transistor curve tracer from Tektronix. I showed the functional blocks of this piece of equipment and how they interact with the transistor and why they're important and what they do. The next video will be about BJTs, bipolar junction transistors. I'll probably go over how to find the AC and DC gain characteristics and how to display them on the screen. And I'll also go over how to show uh, various other parameters like collector uh, current versus base volts, which is useful for finding the HIE or HIB, depending on the configuration of your transistor. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you in the next video.